Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with an airplane landing on the runway. In a car, where the protagonist, Jimmy Vickers, a special operations interrogation officer, is listening to an old message from a woman, who sounds like his mother, waiting to see him soon, and hopes he arrives safely. As he walks back home, the man appears to be in considerable distress. When he gets home, he listens to another message from his friend Griff, who calms him and expresses sympathy for his loss. It is implied that a tragedy has occurred, and Jimmy is in severe anguish as a result. He visits a bar, and asks the proprietors, Debs and Terry, if they have any information regarding the incident. Terry denies knowing anything, Jimmy alleges that Terry lives barely 50 yards from Jimmy's parents' house, close enough to hear their screams. Terry begs Jimmy to leave if he is only here to cause trouble. Jimmy, depressed and enraged by what is occurring, takes Terry by the collar, and clashes with a stranger. Deb stops him, and requests Terry tell him what he knows, who finally tells Jimmy about calling the fire department that night, and he mentions seeing four of the gang members. They broke into the house, and he heard Jimmy's father scream, but merely watched from the window, because he was afraid to intervene. So far, the circumstances are mounting up, and we later see Jimmy in the burning garage at the house, where his parents were allegedly murdered. He looks around, and recalls his mother and father from an old photo he discovers in the room. Back to a few days ago, when Jimmy's parents were still alive. Jimmy's mother asks his father, George, to mow the grass, because he is returning, and she wants the property to look neat. They are both eager for Jimmy to return home, and his father agrees to mow the yard when he returns home later. Elsewhere, Four gang members are sniffing illegal stuff in their car, while waiting for their next victim. One of them informs them their next target is always on the money run. Then we see a girl leave the building to go to the bank. The criminals spot her, and put on their rabbit masks, and pursue the girl's car. The criminals eventually apprehend the girl, and take her out of her car. One of the gang members looks for the money in the car, but can't find it. And then Jimmy's father, George, who happens to be driving by, stops at the scene. When the thugs ask George to leave, one of them smacks him with a baseball bat. George, on the other hand, manages to punch him and crack his head open. He turns to face the others, and asks them to go. One of the members is waving a knife at George to warn him, but they run when they hear the police siren. The police arrive shortly after. George informs the police in his statement that he only intended to halt him, and had no intention of killing him. Chief Inspector Holland jokes that he should have considered it before swinging the baseball bat. He arrests George on suspicion of manslaughter. Later in the day, the remaining three thugs visit Warren, their employer, and inform him that the robbery did not proceed as planned. When Warren inquires about his brother, he is astounded to learn of his death. Warren, enraged by his brother's death, tells the thugs not to return until George dies. When George returns home after being released on bond, the goons, including Warren, trail him, and knock on his door. Two men approach the front door and knock, while the other two approach the back of the house. One of them threatens to assault the mother. George is held against a wall with a knife in his mouth, and the same goon who pointed the knife at him, tells him he shouldn't have acted like a hero that day. The criminals then tie the couple to a chair, and pour gasoline on them. Warren ignites the room, as they whimper. Back to the present day, Jimmy is standing in the same burned-out garage. Griff, a police officer, tells Jimmy one of the neighbors spotted a black BMW speeding, at about 11 p.m. on the same night, but they were unable to read the license plate. He believes the group involved in a dispute with George murdered him, but the police have no evidence against them. Jimmy leaves the garage with tears in his eyes, telling Griff to send him the CCTV footage of the theft. He pays his respects to his parents' graves the next morning. Morgan, his wife appears, when he is in church. They were on the verge of divorce when this catastrophe occurred. She claims that, despite her five emails, he did not attend the burial. When she realizes he is going through a difficult period, she consoles him, telling him he doesn't have to be alone, and he should stop by her flat sometime. The next day, Griff organizes a meeting with Jimmy, and informs him the black BMW belongs to Warren, who is the brother of the person who was inadvertently killed by George that day, according to the investigation. He shows Jimmy the CCTV footage of the robbery. At night, someone hits Warren's car from behind, as he leaves the gym. He gets out of his car, only to see Jimmy waiting inside the car behind him, and he begins slandering the guy. Jimmy, a member of special operations, wastes no time overwhelming Warren, and knocking him out. When he awakens, he finds himself strapped to the front seat, with Jimmy spilling gasoline all over his car. When Jimmy brings up the couple he murdered two weeks earlier, 
Warren erupts in rage, insisting he did the right thing. Instead of repenting, he tells Jimmy how he abused Jimmy's mother that night. While controlling his emotions, Jimmy asks the bad guy to name his gang members, in exchange for his release. Jimmy lights a cigarette after Warren puts down the names. Later, Jimmy goes to Morgan's house, but is unable to speak for long, due to a stab wound. Morgan realizes something is amiss with him when he gets up. When the woman notices the blood on his clothes, she brings him in, and heals his wounds. Despite the fact that the couple was set to divorce, the experience pulls them closer together, resulting in Jimmy spending the night at her house. Warren's death made headlines the next day, although everyone is aware of his stuff dealing career and criminal history. When one of the thugs, Rob, learns of the accident, he and Leon rush towards Warren's business partner, Caleb, who they suspect of murdering, due to a disagreement over percentages. The pair knocks on his door, and confronts him, but Caleb has no idea what they're on about. Caleb disputes the claims, and threatens Rob and Leon not to return to his block, after being rescued by his girlfriend. Griff pays Jimmy a visit late at night, and advises him not to punish the offenders alone. But unlike Griff, Jimmy believes that society's flawed structure would never be able to halt the criminals, who are impacting practically every family in town. They only take the statement and process it, as the perpetrators laugh and spit in their faces. Griff arrives at the crime scene, where a man is slain during an armed robbery. When Chief Inspector Holland dismisses the armed robbery and the victims, brazenly stating that the shopkeeper should not have retaliated, Griff understands the weaknesses in the police system. When Griff becomes agitated, and claims that the man was protecting his job, Holland tells him to take a chill pill. According to Holland, the man's wife will file the insurance claim, and receive a large reward, making everyone happy. Meanwhile, Jimmy continues the hunt, and moves on to the next gang member, Ryan. He drags him to an abandoned location, binds him to a chair, and clamps his mouth shut. Jimmy becomes obsessed with vengeance, conducting all the brutal tortures that any special ops investigator would subject someone to. He pours cement into Ryan's mouth, causing him to swallow and die. The cops discover Ryan's body the next day, cemented from head to stomach. Holland expresses considerable interest, and believes that this is the situation that will lead to decent advancement for him. Following that, Terry, the bar owner shows Holland CCTV footage of his establishment, in which Jimmy is seen loading a passed out man into the back of his car. Despite Deb's advice not to reveal the footage, Terry does not want his pub to burn down like George's. Morgan lies to the cops about Jimmy, while he hides in her flat. Later, Jimmy is in the store, when two cops start following him. A car comes to a sudden halt just as they are ready to arrest him. Two strong men emerge and fight the officers, allowing Jimmy to flee. He is astonished to see Colonel Leach come out of the car. Jimmy is such a great asset to the special ops, that the colonel personally arrived to take him back. He gives Jimmy another 48 hours to clean up his mess, meaning he must get over the other gang members before returning to his employment. Elsewhere, Griff approaches Joe, the SWAT leader, and advises him that this case should not be treated seriously. Joe, suspicious of something shady, asks Griff if he knows who the murderer is. He reveals the truth, he is Jimmy's pal, whose parents were brutally murdered. As Joe continues to believe Jimmy is out of control, Griff claims that Holland is no different, and that he is only taking this case seriously in order to become superintendent, which will most likely wreck the department, due to his corruption and irresponsibility. Back to Jimmy, he goes about his retribution, knowing he has the army's support, and cannot be caught. While Leon is sitting in the strip club, he receives an envelope with Ryan's photograph. Fearing for his life, the thug flees the club and runs, until he is pushed down by Jimmy. Leon regains consciousness, and discovers himself bound to the ground, his lower body to the gate, and his upper body to the car. Jimmy is even more enraged because Leon has no understanding of why he is being tormented. As a result, Jimmy shows no mercy, he gets in the car, and speeds away, leaving him in shreds. Colonel Leach runs into Holland in a restaurant, the next day. He requests Holland hand over all the police evidence discovered on Jimmy, and claims Jimmy belongs to the army, not him. Hearing this, Holland refuses, claiming that if the colonel takes the law into his own hands, he should be imprisoned. Colonel Leach goes on to explain Jimmy's bravery, recalling a 2009 event. He claims that the army apprehended a terrorist, who was planning a huge attack on Britain, but the terrorist refused to reveal any details. However, Jimmy only needed 10 minutes alone with the terrorist, to have him spill his guts. People like Jimmy, he claims, do not fear death, rather, they welcome it. Finally, he says Jimmy will finish off these guys, and vanish into thin air. Holland accepts the challenge, and promises to find Jimmy. 
Colonel Leach departs, warning Holland that if he ever touches Jimmy, he will come down hard on him. The police superintendent and commissioner of police meet the army head, on short notice. Jimmy, the subject of the ongoing investigation, should not be detained under any circumstances, according to the army chief. Without divulging too much about Jimmy, the officials explain to the superintendents how important Jimmy is to Britain's top secret agencies. The army authority directs that higher-ups in the police department report directly on the progress of this probe. Later at night, the gang's final surviving member, Rob, who was part of the group that murdered Jimmy's parents, is heading to a dealer. Jimmy forces him to knock on the door, and uses him as a shield, however, Rob flees the scene. Except for Caleb, Warren's business partner, he kills all of the gang's surviving dealers. Jimmy ties him to the chair, and stirs some chemicals in a bucket, the same chemicals used by the dealers to create the stuff. He dissolves all of the money in the bucket, and pours the chemical over the guy's head, melting him. Meanwhile, Holland learns Constable Griff has been sending information to Jimmy since the beginning, so he asks him who is next on Jimmy's radar. Griff refuses to tell him, and requests he remain out of Jimmy's path. But Holland appears unafraid to go against his superintendent's orders, in order to find Jimmy. Holland locates the remaining gang member in the hospital, who escaped the scene the night before. Next, the limping man is in Jimmy's apartment, looking at some letters. Jimmy pursues him, and forces him to drive near the seaport. He forces the man to sit on his knees, wrists tied, and pulls out a syringe, claiming this is the most toxic aerosol spray that will burn anyone's inside. Rob spits on Jimmy, and urges him to look in his car's trunk. To Jimmy's amazement, Rob killed Morgan before Jimmy could kill him. In shock and tiredness, Jimmy empties the magazine of his gun into Rob, just as a SWAT team led by Holland arrives on the scene. Griff also appears, and confronts Holland about releasing Rob from the hospital, and allowing him to murder Jimmy's wife. Holland claims he let him go so the man might lead him to Jimmy, but he had no idea the man would murder his wife. When the SWAT Captain Joe sees Holland's reality, he orders his unit to stand down, leaving Holland stunned. They allow Jimmy to walk away from the situation. Before departing, Jimmy strikes Holland in the face, knocking him out. In an alley, a random female is dumping trash. Two people block her path, and grab her, as she pleads for help. Jimmy appears at the other end of the alley, and gets confronted by the goons and asked to leave. We see an evil smile on Jimmy. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.